we made up arguments to yell at each other, I'd have to come up with a counter argument, but I don't have a counter argument. You, I agree 100% with everything you said. Uh, that's exactly the way I feel about it. So we'll move on. I know you want to, don't want to spend too much time. Now you ruined my day. I, I'm, I'm I'm all, I'm all you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a specialty of mine. You take <laughs> years of practice, years of practice. I've I've uh, perfected the ability to ruin people's days. Uh, let's do some Twitter questions. Do we have some good ones from Generous Carriage, our friend Lonnie? If Roy was Buxton's hitting coach, where would you start with him? I I get back to uh, doing something very simple. And again, I'm not the hitting coach, and I'm not trying to promote myself as as the hitting coach and, and they've got a r- very good one in James Rowson. Uh but I would get I would get away from mechanics with him. And I don't know I I don't I don't know that that, that James is 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 mechanically oriented with with Byron right right now. But when Byron started hitting last year, he went again he went through a stretch where he was trying to hit the ball to right field. Mm-hmm. And Amazing how that keeps coming up. It, it just it keeps coming up. It hit the ball to the opposite field. And again, I don't want to Byron Buxton with all the talent that he has to juice I'm sorry, to drive the baseball. I don't want him to be a slap hitter to right. the opposite field. I I'm not advocating that. But what happens when you try to let, let's see, let's talk about what he's doing now. What he does, his natural swing is not great for not conducive to being a high contact, high average hitter in the major leagues. He's got talent that got him here because that talent was could overcome every, everything, including bad mecha- swing mechanics. But he is he wants to be a pull hitter. His swing is sweepy to this pull side which means his bat is going to drag a little bit and he can't handle inside and high fastballs. And so he tends to want to hit the ball. You have to hit the ball out in front of you to pull the ball. So he tends to, the first thing he sees, it's like, okay, that looks like a fastball. I'm going to get out there in front. And then it's something else. Whether it's a high fastball, can't hit it anyway. If it's a breaking ball, he can't hit it because he's on fastball speed and he's trying to hit it to his pull field out in front of him. By trying to hit the ball the opposite field, two things happen. The first and most important thing is you watch the ball a lot longer mm-hmm. because hitting the ball to right field, you let the ball travel back on the plate further to the contact. The contact point is back over the plate more instead of out in front. So you've got two, three, four feet more time to watch the ball before you have to make contact with it, hitting the ball that way. He's not watching the ball long enough. He's starting to swing at the first thing he sees. Fastball, oh, well, no, it's not, right? He he's basically can hit anything f- that's kind of knee to mid-thigh height from the middle of the plate in. Anything that's, n- that's a fastball. Anything that's not that, he's not going to hit. And if he fouls that pitch off, then he's never going to see it again in that bat, and he's toast, right? I mean, that's, I mean, if you think about what you've watched, right. that's what you've seen. So what's the antidote to that? The antidote to me is watch the ball longer by trying to do something positive with the ball. Try to hit the ball in the opposite field. That will make you watch it longer, and it will take a lot of the sweep out of your swing because there's no possible way to hit the ball in the opposite field if you're, if you're trying to hit it over there by by sweeping at it, you have to be a little bit more on top of the baseball, which means, at the very least, the big end of the bat travels a little more, a little bit more level through the hitting zone than sweeping up at it. And both of those things, watching it longer and having your bat be a little more level back at the ball, will get you a lot, get him an awful lot more contact. Then, when that talent takes over. Then he's going to be hitting the ball over the ballpark and out of the ballpark and off the fence all over the ballpark. I mean, because we saw it last year. Mm-hmm. But I really don't think that great second half that he had last year. Uh, you can discount that he spent two or three weeks trying to hit the ball to right field before before that happened. Right before the, and and. I, I, so to answer, Lonnie, to answer your question, I mean, it's a long-winded, you know, really, you know, kind of mechanical, arcane. Or, but it's so deal, important. But, it's but, so, but so that, central to his career. But, but I, that's, 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 what, that's what I would do. And I, and, it's, and I would bunt once a game. Yeah. I, I mean, just because it's such a fire drill 
in the infield. Oh, when, it's so when, funny to watch when, defenses uh, it's react. It's so wonderful when to watch, and, and especially the pitcher. He bunted yes. the ball. He beat the ball out. They won a ball game the other day because he bunted the ball back to the pitcher and was going to beat it out, and the pitcher threw it down the right field line because he his hair was on fire, right? And and um, he might make an out. Bunting once again, he might make a lot of outs on that bunt attempt. And then all of a sudden, it's going to be a game winner, a game changer, because he's not only going to get a hit, but he's going to end up on second or third. And if he ends up just on first, he'll steal second. I mean, he's he's got to give himself a chance to get those legs moving. And trying to hit the ball to left field is is not the answer. I've also had hitters tell me that bunting can help your hitting, just seeing the ball hit the bat, tracking the ball through the zone. Ty Cobb used to – Ty Cobb said, and again, I apologize for our old school, but, I, I mean, Ty Cobb's Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb was a good baseball player. He was a pretty good baseball player. He was a fairly good hitter, and <laughs> he said he he would bunt his way out of slumps. Yep. And and people would say, well, I don't see you bunt for hits all the time. I go, I'm not talking about hits. I would take batting practice and just bunt. Mm-hmm. I, I just needed to watch the ball longer. Ted Williams said, well, you know, if I'm in a slump, what, what am I do? What am I going to do? I'm going to – Get up on the plate, choke up on the bat, and try to hit the pitcher in the forehead with it every time mm-hmm. I got, you know, hit, ram the ball back up the middle. I mean, there are countless. It, Ted didn't say, I'm going to use my legs better. You know, Ted didn't say, I'm going to get on my back leg and I'm going to wait a lot, you know, a lot. Ted said, Ty Cobb said, I'm going to do something positive with the baseball that will make all these other things work. Yep. Right? And that's where, I, that's where I think the difference is. You go up there uh, to the plate. I mean, it's like Yogi said, I didn't, I, I'm not up here to read, you know, talking about where the label is on the bat. And you're also not up there to do a whole lot of thinking about mechanics because no you, time. you just don't have the time and it clogs up. I really think if your mind is, is cluttered, you don't see as well. Mm-hmm. I, I have no proof of that. Oh, I, I agree with you. I, I, but I, I think you don't, you, if your mind's cluttered, you don't see the baseball as well. And, and the most important thing in hitting, by the way, is seeing the ball early and seeing it really well all the way to the, to the bat, right? And, and so I, I just think you have to do things that are positive in your mind. You have one thing in your mind. Jerry Kuzman, Jerry Kuzman couldn't hit a lick. But he told me one time, I was struggling and he said, why don't you just try you just taking the, in, any inside pitch? Just take it. Because I wanted to pull the ball, right? right? I, I was a pull hitter. I wanted to pull the ball. By the way, people think I, you know, I say all this stuff like I did it. You know, when I did it, it was really good. If I was too arrogant or stupid or stubborn or whatever not to do it, it made me be the hitter that I was. I mean, there are a lot of things I would do differently. But I, I know where I speak now sometimes because I did them and many times because I didn't. Mm-hmm. Jerry Kuzman said to me, why don't you just take the ball inside the inside corner pitch? Just because, you know, you, and Jerry didn't know anything about hitting, but, but, he, but he paid attention. You know, he listened to other hitters and stuff. And as a pitcher, he, he kind of, I think, intuitively knew you have to be in a hurry to hit the ball inside. Mm-hmm. So until you get two strikes, if you just take, if you look for the ball out over the plate and try to hit the ball back through the middle or the opposite gap, then the only pitch you're going to have trouble with is the inside corner. And you can hit every f- other fastball, and you'll be on breaking balls because you're waiting a little bit longer on the fastball. And then it's the way Kirby Puckett used to hit. He'd hit every fastball off the right center field fence, and someone threw a breaking ball strike. He'd hit the ball nine miles over the left field fence. And then they'd, they'd, they'd start throwing him fastballs again, and, and you know, there he'd go, hitting, you know, hitting the ball over the ballpark. And, and that's where I think Buxton is. Forget about the inside corner. Forget about it until you get two strikes. Do the best you can at, at two strikes. But guys can't hit at the inside corner. The pitchers can't hit the inside corner all the time anyway. Until you get two strikes, when you're struggling like this, take it. Forget mm-hmm. about it. It's not, it doesn't even exist. Look for the ball out of the plate. Hit the ball to right center. Let us watch you run. Uh, and Byron told me this spring that uh, his turnaround came when he just had the thought, I'm going to hit the second baseman in the forehead. You know, What's wrong simple. with that? And that's Derek Falvey, I talked thought. to Derek Falvey, and Derek takes it to these. All, you know, Derek's a really smart guy. And he does all kinds of research, all kinds of analytics, all kinds of sports psychology. And he told me that, you know, doing being analytically driven doesn't mean they want their hitters thinking about numbers or statistics. He said they. He said their experience, their research indicates that hitters got to have one good thought in their head when they go to the plate. You can't have more more room from that. And he said the the common 
good hitter thought that he's come across in his years in the game is hit the ball to the opposite field gap. Drive it to the opposite field gap. And, and he said, he said your, your mechanics will fall into place when you have the right thought in your head. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I have a real positive thought about what you're going to do with the baseball, not where your hands are, where your legs are. Now, what you're not going to do, I, because not, we're not good at processing negatives either. And you can't think about five things, you know, when you get up there. And, and I think it's hard to think about a mechanical thing. But if you go up there and say, I'm going to do this one thing, and if that one thing gets you in the proper position, then he's right. Everything will take care of himself. I, I told Miguel Sano, and this is none of my business to be, you know, talking like this to, to Sano. Um, I give you permission. But I, I, to, I told Sano one time, I was standing around the batting cage, and I said, hey, hit every ball over the center field fence. I know you want to hit over the fence, but hit it over the center field fence. Try to hit every ball over the center field fence, right? Um, and I told Mulder, I felt bad. It's none of my business, you know, but I told, I, I uh, walked in Molly's office and I said, hey, by the way, I just want you to know, I, I probably screwed up here. I, I don't want to be, mean to be messing with your players, but I just told Sano to hit the ball over the center field fence or over the right center field fence, you know, every time. And try to hit a home run any time up, but make it be that, that direction just because of what it would do. He would mm-hmm. take pitches inside. He would, he would hit hanging breaking ball. He would do all the stuff that, and, and, um, Paul looked at me and said, I'll kiss you if, if, if he, get, if he actually does that. <laughs> I, 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 you, you have my permission to tell him that. Right. I mean, I mean Paul knows I, Paul being the hitter he, he was, I mean, he, he knows better than anybody. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, generous carriage. Again, our friend Lonnie also complimented you uh, on your work with Morneau. He said, I'll take two guys who know baseball talking through a game over play by play any day. Wonderful stuff. Uh, Thank the, you, Lonnie. It was nice of you. And it was, yeah. fun. it was fun having Justin in the booth for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Justin's a good dude. Uh, from Luke Reachens with Castro's injury, who should be the twins regular catcher until they find a new one? Do you, do you value Garver because of the bat or Wilson because of the love? I think, all of a sudden, Bobby Wilson is going to get an awful lot more I playing time. I, 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 and only because it, look, it's 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 hard to have to to learn the things you have to learn to improve the things that Mitch has to improve as a catcher in the big leagues yeah. when you're trying to win games. I mean, it's really hard to do, and um, I think he's good. I think he's capable. I think he has all the makings of being able to do all that. But all of a sudden, there's a there's a little bit more sense of urgency about uh, about a, a shortcoming that will one day be better, but wasn't better today, and it costs us a ball. It potentially costs us a ball game. And, and again, then you then you look at Bobby Wilson. He's doing all the things right, and if he, you know, is over twenty, you know, then you go oh, eh. right. So I mean, this is going to be a combination, and I I, my, I don't know. Again, I don't know anything about any of this, but my suspicion would be that. You know, Paul's going to play hunches with catchers, with his pitchers, and opposing pitchers, and you, you know who Bobby Wilson's got a chance against, and you know different things. I I think they're, or if if they, if it figures to be a, a very low scoring game, he might go defense rather than you know if they've got, mm-hmm. if they've got Chris Sale out there, you know. He may go with Bobby Wilson, thinking, well, you know, Mitch, it's going to be hard on Mitch too. I can't afford to give up a whole bunch of runs here defensively. So, right. yeah, you know, I mean, I think there's all kinds of things that will be going on in uh, in Paul's mind about that. One more Twitter question. Again, this is the Roy Smalley Show. Roy Smalley's Chin Music. TalkNorth.com is the network. If you'd like to advertise with us, send me an email: jsuhan47 at gmail dot com. And uh, let's get to the last question here. Matt Henning asks, can someone get David Ortiz to talk to Sano <laughs> about taking his career slash diet seriously? Think that might work. Yeah, I do think that. I mean, to the extent that that's a problem, uh, that, that Matt, to the extent that you're right, that you've identified a problem uh, there, uh, if that is one, uh, that uh, Sano needs some counseling about that, that I think Ortiz would be, I, I can't think of a better guy uh, to, you know, to do that. Um, I, I really can't. And uh, Nelson Cruz might, uh, might be one or uh, who's the other fellow in uh, Jose Abreu. Mm-hmm. Abreu might be a great guy also because Abreu has, um, according to the uh, White Sox staff, has really turned 
his thinking around about taking care of himself and and uh, has um, 